Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube, where they don't include the audio ads, although YouTube may provide their own ads on their platform. Alternatively, you can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. To those of you who are already supporting us, we extend our heartfelt thanks. Your contributions make it possible for us to continue doing what we love. And as a final note, I did want to mention one last thing. If you are paying for a service, let's say like Audible, and you're listening to this show on that site, they do not provide any financial or monetary means to this podcast. We provide it to them as a way for you to be able to listen, but they don't help us in any way. So again, thank you to everybody who's already supporting. And those of you who want to support us in the future, I deeply appreciate it. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger. Original air date is May 12th, 1947. And the title is City of the Dead. Thanks for listening. And let's get into it. A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. The City of the Dead was near the border, 
No one knew how the community of cliff dwellings that had been unoccupied for as long as anyone could remember came by that name. Not even Don and Peggy Dawson, who lived in a sprawling Dobie ranch house not far away. Their father had lived in that house, and so had their grandfather. But Don and his sister were the only ones left of the family. They lived in the Doby house alone, and for the past few days they had felt an atmosphere of mystery. It was past midnight. The house was dark except for a small lamp in one room. A single window of that room had been covered with a blanket, so no light could be seen outside. Don and the girl were tense as they sat facing the door. The boy held a shotgun across his knees. Peggy. Yes? Did you hear anything? What? Just for a second there, I thought I heard someone moving outside in the hall. Oh. It sounded like a creaking board in the floor. I, I didn't hear it. Wait, wait, we'll listen. I don't hear it now. I guess I was imagining things. Eh? Maybe they won't come tonight. I hope they do. Well, Don, how can you see that? Well, I do. I want to find out what's going on around here. There's prowlers around, and I'm going to catch them. They're going to talk and talk plenty. <laughs> but what if they catch us? I'll let them try it. I'll blow them to glory. Yes, but what... And besides, they won't know where we are. That's why I covered the windows to hide the light. They think we've gone to bed. Oh, I hope so. I'm fed up with people prowling around our house night after night. Don? Huh? What do you suppose they're after? Don't ask me. We haven't anything worth stealing. But, well, they must have some reason for coming around. Uh-huh. Must have. You remember what Father told us, don't you? About that money Grandpa's supposed to have hidden? Yes. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't think you ever had any fortune in oh, gold. Oh, but talked about it so much. But I... why hasn't the money ever been found? <laughs> no one knew where to look. Oh, now, look, Peggy. If he left a lot of gold hidden somewhere, don't you suppose he'd have a map or some kind of instructions as where to find it? Well, maybe he did. We don't know. Maybe he did leave a map and it's been lost. Or... or what? Well, Father said there were some outlaws across the border who'd been threatening Grandpa. He got that gold together by selling almost everything he had, except this house and the land it stands on. Then he hid the gold and left this part of the country. But the outlaws found him and killed him. Well, I know all that, Peggy. What about it? Well, maybe he died before he had a chance to make a map or, or tell anyone where the money was hidden. Oh, or maybe those crooks got it. If there ever was any hidden gold. Well, maybe the money was hidden right here in this house. Maybe these men who've been breaking in and prowling around learned about it somehow. Well, maybe that's what they're looking for. Ah, oh, Peggy. If that money was hidden here, we'd know about it. We Hold it. What? Don, what? Don't look the door. Hey, you there. <laughs> the lamp, he shot out the light. Who did that? Where are you? Come back here. Oh, Don, I can't see a thing. Oh, I can't find it. Get the door open. Get in. I can't. Peggy, we're locked in. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were camped not far from the Dawson Ranch. The soft whinny of silver wakened them from sleep. What is it, Silver? What's wrong, fella? They put ear to ground. Maybe here. What is it, Toto? Horses. They come this way fast. Dump your canteen on the fire. I'll get this one. Uh, fire plenty low now. Don't want any fire. Who ride at this time of night? I don't know. Uh, fire out now. Good. All right, Silver. Quiet, boy. You've done your part. Men fella travel plenty fast. Coming from the direction of the Dawson Ranch and heading toward the city of the dead... men. May not see faces of fellas. You see them? No, it was too dark, Tonto. But they could have come from just one place. Dawson Ranch? Yes, it's the only one around here. I wonder if they've made trouble for Don and Peggy. Uh, we go find out? Yes, come on, settle up. Uh -huh. In less than a minute, both horses were saddled and the Lone Ranger and Tonto were ready for riding. Then the masked man's voice rang out on the still night air. <laughs> the 
They approached the Dawson Ranch and saw lights in every window of the low building. They reined up, dismounted, and rapped on the door. Peggy opened the door and leaped to one side. You're covered, Dawson. Oh, his mask. Get him up or I'll blow your head off. Get it on. Lower that shotgun. Get him up, I tell you. Get him up or I'll shoot. You won't shoot a friend of your father and grandfather. Come in, Toto, and close the door. Don, Don, he's not putting his hands up. I better take that shotgun. No, why you... Now, take it easy. We came here to see if you were in trouble. Who are you? I told you. But... Father didn't have any outlaw friends. That man... You're right, Peggy. He had no outlaw friends, and we're not outlaws. We saw four men riding away from here. We thought you might have had trouble. Don, this man talks like a friend. Perhaps he can help us. I don't know how. Who were those men? They've been prowling around here every night for the past several nights. Tonight, Don and I tried to catch him, but they locked us in one of the small rooms. The locks in this house are mighty sound. We were over an hour getting out. We didn't dare move for over half an hour. A man waited outside the door and threatened to shoot if we tried to escape. What did they want? That's just it. We don't know. They're looking for something. Gold? <gasps> Why do you say that? What makes you think they'd be looking for gold? Were they? We don't know what they were looking for. Nothing in this house worth stealing. But they did take the Indian rock. You stealing, sis? They took it, Peggy, but I think you're wrong. I think it's just mislaid. Might have been gone for weeks. No, Donna, I'm sure it was in this house just yesterday. Well, even if they stole it, it doesn't mean anything. What was the rug like? Just a little rug, about two feet square. My grandpa got it from a Navajo squaw. Did uh, the men take anything else? I don't think so. We lighted lamps all over the house so we could make a complete search. <laughs> you can see for yourself. Not much anyone could carry away. Don, I've heard stories about some gold... Your grandfather was supposed to have hidden it in this house. Oh. Isn't that why those men came here? Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess it is. After all these years, why should anyone suddenly decide to come here and search for the gold? I can't answer that question, Peggy. Fact is, if you heard about gold, other people probably heard about it, too. Uh, You said you were locked in a room with a man standing guard outside. That's right. You could have been kept there indefinitely, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. The fact that the men went away and left you indicates that they found what they came what? for. You think it was a rug? I think it must have been. But, but why? Why would anyone want a dinky little two-foot rug? We can probably find out from the men who took it. Toto, by the time we get back to our camp, the moon will have risen. Perhaps we can find the trail. Well, me try. You going to trail those men by moonlight? Yes, Don. Well, then I'm going with you. And I... Very well. I'll go saddle horses, Peggy. I'll have them ready in just a minute. Tonto's progress in following the trail by moonlight was quite slow, but he kept on, setting the path for the Lone Ranger, Don Dawson, and his sister Peggy. Daybreak found the quartet still in the saddle. We'll be able to make better time from now on. You sure we're still on the right trail? Yes, I'm sure of that. We're going toward the border, aren't we? Yes. Somewhere else, Peggy. We're riding in a beeline for the city of the dead. There was a pause for breakfast. Then after a short rest, the group continued throughout the morning. After a halt at noon... The journey went on until darkness gathered. It was quite dark when the Lone Ranger signaled a halt at a narrow pass between towering cliffs. By this time, the masked man had won the complete friendship and confidence of Don and Peggy Dawson. They were willing to follow his lead and act on any suggestions he made. It's up to you, mister. You think we ought to shove on? Well, Peggy and I will do it. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. Perhaps your sister's too tired to go any farther. How about it, Peggy? Oh, I'm not a bit tired. Traveling as slowly as we have, I was able to doze in the saddle several times. Where are we, anyway? We must be close to the city of the dead. This pass opens into the valley of the cliff dwellings. Isn't that right, Tonto? Uh-huh. That's right. You think this is where the four men came? Well, tracks come here. <laughs> well, I, I guess they must have come here. Wouldn't be tracks otherwise. What? A place like this kind of... And it kind of gives me the creeps. Why, why, Don Dawson, are you afraid? Of course not. There are a lot of good hiding places in those old cliff dwellings. 
It might be well to make camp right here and continue on his life. What? And let those, those drug stealers get that much farther ahead of us? After trailing them this far, I want to catch them. Yeah, whatever you say, Peggy. Don, I'm sure Grandpa let go, and, and I'm sure those men who stole the rug know something about it. All right. I guess if Peggy can go on, I can. So it's up to you. Well, we'll shove on if Tonto can follow the tracks. Huh? Me follow him. Get him up, Scout. Hey, come, come on, boy. Come on, sir. Tonto led the way with the masked man at his side. Don and his sister brought up the rear until young Dawson speeded up to reach the Lone Ranger's side. Ho, ho there, ho. Easy, easy boy, easy. easy. I want to speak to you for just a minute. Yes, Don. What is it? You sure we're still on the trail of those men? Tonto doesn't continue when he loses the trail. This place, this valley, it's getting on my nerves. Why? Look at all those caves on the wall of the valley. Those black holes. Look like eyes. Eyes that are staring at us. Steady, steady, Don. Don't let your imagination run away with you. Peggy's been telling me stories about this place. There are lots of stories about it. Are they true? No. There's nothing supernatural about this or any other place. But, but this is the city of the dead, isn't it? Well, it's called that because the tribe that used to live here has died out. You better get back and stay with your sister. Yeah, I guess I better. Come on, boy, get around here. You all right, sis? Hey, wait! Oh, right up, fellow. Oh, 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 look. Oh, oh, look, where's Peggy? She's not in the saddle. Peggy! Peggy, where are you? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. It was dark in the valley that was known as the City of the Dead. The moon had not yet risen, and the only light came from stars. But there was light enough to show that Peggy's horse was riderless, though less than ten paces in the rear of her brother, Tonto, and the Lone Ranger, the girl had disappeared without a sound. As soon as her absence was discovered, the Lone Ranger wheeled his mighty stallion around. We'll go over the back trail. Follow me. The Lone Ranger set the pace and traveled as fast as possible in the direction from which they had come. Where's he going? You see? The masked man maintained the pace until he reached a place where trees grew close to the trail. Oh, 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 oh. Why are you stopping here? I remembered this tree. We had to duck beneath this branch, he's a big fellow. I want to examine the ground around here. What about Peggy? What about my sister? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Stand watch, Tonto. Uh, hey, Savvy. Did you find something? Yes. There's some freshly torn leaves, some broken twigs beneath the tree. What's that mean? Don, listen to me and be sure you answer the question accurately. Do you remember riding beneath this branch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. You were ahead of your sister? Yeah. The trail was so narrow, we had to go single file. I told her I'd go ahead. Did you see her after that? Well, no, come to think of it. When I was ahead, I, I rode up to join you and Tano. Well, I see what you mean. Someone could have waited on that branch and grabbed her. She went beneath it. That's what I think. Well, why didn't she cry out? Perhaps she couldn't. Otto, I think I know which way she was taken. Huh? If a horse had been close, when we came by, we'd probably have seen it. I think the man who captured Peggy came from the wall of the valley to the tree and went back the same way. Well, that ridge up there. Yes. And she's in one of those caves and there's hundreds of them. Those crooks might be hiding anywhere. How can we possibly find them? You think Tonto can follow the tracks? No, no tracks on stone. We'll have to leave our horses here and follow that ridge on foot. (laughs) 
All right, Don. Give me your hand. Here. Up with you. There. All right, Don. Uh-huh. Me, me make it. Now that we're on the ridge, the rest should be easy. A regular path winding up above. The Indians who once lived here must have carved it out of the rock in order to get down into the valley from their caves and back up again. Let's keep going. All right, come on. You see anything ahead? You hear anybody? No. Stay hurt, Peggy. Don't think about that, Don. We've got to find her as quickly as we can. Dirty crooks. Keep your voice down and watch your step. If you slip, you'll have a bad fall. Getting pretty high. This path goes all the way to the top row of caves. You can just make them out. What I want to know is... Hey, what the... Wait, wait a minute. That was just a warning. Stop right where you are. Came up that way. We're going to get you. You take one more step ahead... Now, next shot will be aimed to kill. Who are you? Who are you, anyway? That's something you'll never know. Now, go on, hit the back trail before I open fire. Why, you Just a minute, just a minute, Don. Did you capture Miss Dawson? We did. You do just what I say, she'll be sent back to your safe and sound. Let's rush him. That's a second warning, young fella. If you try any rushing, you'll find out that the Indians were mighty smart in building this place so they could keep their enemies at a distance. He's right, Don. We can't go away and leave Peggy. There's four of us here, and we can shoot from behind rocks. If that's not enough to convince you that you'd better turn tail, we'll open fire. What about my sister? It's up to you whether she lives or dies. If we leave here, will you promise to let Peggy Dawson go? You heard what I said. You take orders, and the girl will be released. Now, listen to me. It's too dark to see anything now. But we'll meet your proposition halfway. Meaning what? We have to have proof that you're holding Peggy Dawson captive. We'll go below where we left our horses and wait there until daybreak. You'll go farther than that, mister. You'll go clear out of this valley. We will if you've told the truth. At daybreak, you bring Miss Dawson to the ledge where we can see her. What are you going to see her for? So we'll know that she's alive and unharmed. If she is, we'll move on. Oh, wait a minute, mister. That Keep quiet. That's a deal. We don't want gunplay unless you force it. You go back to your horses. We'll show you the Dawson girl up here on this lake as soon as it gets daylight. Very well. Come on, Don. We'll go back to the horses. And leave Peggy with those critters? Come on, I say. I won't do it. I won't believe a word they say. They don't dare let her go. Can't you see that? They'd promise anything to get rid of us. You better do what masked men say, Don. But, Tyler, they'll kill my sister. If they shoot you, they'll be facing a murder charge as well as a charge of theft of a Navajo rug. In that case, it'd be less likely to let your sister go. Now, come on. That's good advice, Dawson. You'd better follow it. You're going to follow it, whether you want to or not. Let go. Let go, Ma. On your way. Confound it all. Why'd you drag me down here? Those critters didn't have the stomach for gunplay. I bet we could have rushed them with a 50-50 chance of outshooting them. Don, you don't know much about the way the Indians planned a defense when they built these ridges. One man with a gun could stand off a dozen. That's right, Don. But trust in those polecats. I think that Peggy's up there probably tied and gagged. Your sister will be safe until daybreak. They know they have to let us see her. Even so, that doesn't mean they let her go. We're not going to take them at their word. What, what do you mean? I think we can outwit them. Outwit them? You and Tonto have got to do exactly what I say. If you'll promise to do that... I'll outline my plan. Well, I'll promise anything to save Peggy's life. All right. Now listen to me. Soon after the Lone Ranger and his companions were settled in camp, a lean-faced man replaced Bart as guard at the mouth of one of the many caves that studded the wall of the valley. Slim remained on duty until daybreak. Then he went inside to join the leader. Beasley. Said you wanted to be sure to get up at daybreak. Bart and Gary are back in the tunnel. Gotta take the girl out on the ledge so she can be seen by her brother. Yeah. He and his pals are camped out in the open where we can see him. Miss Peggy, you don't hanker to hurt no one unless it's necessary. You're giving your brother a chance to leave the valley alive with those two pals of his. He'll never leave as long as I'm here. Untie, Slim. Right. He'll leave if he sees He'll... you alive and well. He won't. Your brother's no fool. Knows he can't help you by staying around. 
We told him if he and his pals cleared out, we'd let you go when we get through here. You won't let me go, Beasley. You know you won't. You don't dare. She's untied. Now what? Get your rifle. All right. If the girl makes trouble, shoot her brother. Oh, well, you wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Oh, I guess you would. I'll go with you. Ah, you've shown good sense. Will, will you really let me go? Sure, of course we will. Here's the ledge. There they are, Beasley. You can even see the three of them and their horses. Yeah. One's already in the saddle. Wave to your brother. That's it. Slim, they're going to keep their promise. They're shoving out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You stay here on the ledge and keep watch in case any more visitors come this way. Right. You, Miss Peggy, get back inside. Oh. Come on, come on. What are you going to do now? Well, I'm sorry about this, Miss Peggy. But I can't take any chances. Oh. I let you go, you squeal on us. You, you mean you got... I reckon you seven. Oh, you... Are you beast? Beasley! Beasley! Her boss, look what we got! Well, bring it here! We're coming. But it's pretty heavy. We can't move fast. What? A chair. Set it up. Right here, Gary. Yeah. We found it right where the instructions said. It's locked plenty tight. Stand back. I'll fix that. Now, take a look. See if that busted the lock. It did. Look, gold. Double eagle. <laughs> I told you, boys, I'd show you how to get rich. I told you that old squaw knew what she was talking about. <laughs> How's that cash look to you? Not bad, huh? That's my money. It belongs to Don and me. It's the money grandfather left. I guess you're just about right, Miss Peggy. Uh-oh. Tell her, Bart. Tell her how you found it. It was easy after we got hold of that Navajo rug. A uh, Navajo rug? Sure. <laughs> Your grandpa had a squaw weave the rug so the pattern was a map of these here caves and tunnels. He was uh, killed before he had a chance to tell anyone the meaning of the rug. Now, Peggy, I'm afraid you have to be killed before you can tell what you know. You can kill me, Busy. But remember this, you won't get away with it. My brother left here because you promised to let me go. If you break that promise, he'll come back. He'll get you for the last thing he does. That's big talk, Miss Peggy. But there's just one trouble. Your brother won't have any idea who to look for. Yes, he will. What? Who is it? All of you get your hands up. Who are you? Who is it? That boy. Hey, boss, what's the matter? That goes for you, too. He's over there. Now, so him. Oh, no. Different than it was last night. Oh. Now, I'm the one who's fortified by a rock. Does anyone else want gunplay? Don't shoot! My hands are up! And mine. All of you, lower one hand slowly and unhook your gun belts. Ooh. Just let the belts drop to the floor. Oh, it is you. Hurry with those gun belts. Pick them up, Higgy. I'll get them. Where'd you come from? I saw you ride away from the valley a few minutes ago. I'll satisfy your curiosity. You saw a dummy in the saddle of my horse. A dummy? I spent the whole night making my way up here through the system of tunnels that connect all these caves. Hell of all the cussed luck. Just when we had our hands on a fortune. Line up over there and face the wall. I'm going to tie you up. I can help keep them covered. Good. And don't take any chances with them, Peggy. If any one of them makes a fast move, shoot. And we'll get new furniture and restock the ranch. And <laughs> get some clothes for you and books. And... Oh, golly, Peggy, we'll have everything. You know, Don, it doesn't seem right. All this money and that masked man wouldn't take a single dime. I know it, Peggy, but, well, I sure tried to split it with him. Uh, how did he know his way through that system of tunnels? Well, I don't know how he knew that, sis. But I do know how he knew about us and the secret of the hidden gold. Oh, how? Well, that Indian friend of his knew an old squaw. She told Tana about the rug she wove years and years ago. She's the one told Beasley and Bart about it, too. Are all four of those men in jail now? Oh, they sure are. And they'll stay there. Uh, Don, I-, I want you to find that masked man and bring him back here. I, I want to see him without his mask and tell him how much we owe him. And I wanna... hey, now, hold on, Peggy. Back <laughs> up. He won't come here. And he wouldn't take off his mask if he did. And he doesn't want any thanks. Oh, how do you know? Because he's the Lone Ranger.
story you have just heard is a... This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.